What's going on guys? Patrick with Uncle Bill's Camping and today what we're going to be talking about is this right here. This is the EcoFlow 110 solar panel. This happens to be the second piece of my solar generator setup and if this is something you're interested in, stick around for a few minutes and I'm going to tell you all about it. So right here is a portable folding 110 watt solar panel by EcoFlow. Uh, this is actually the second part of my solar generator setup. And what we're gonna do in this video is open this up, set it up in the backyard in a real world situation, hook it into the EcoFlow river that I already have. And we're gonna see how long it takes to set this up. We're not gonna move the panel around once it's set. We're just gonna set it and forget it and uh, just see how well it does. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead, head inside, open this up, and have a look. All right, guys, so before we take this out and do the field test, let me just show you what you get when you purchase one of these. Now, we're not going to bother doing an unboxing video. EcoFlow is really good about packaging their materials. They're very proud of their products, and you've probably seen a bunch of unboxing videos already. So we're just going to skip all that and get right down to the meat and potatoes of it. So it comes in this really nice case that also happens to double as a stand. And when you open it up, one of the first things you're going to see are the outputs from the solar panel. Those outputs happen to use MC4 connectors. Now, if you happen to have an EcoFlow battery, then you probably already have these adapters that came with it, which is MC4 to XT60. Now, if you're using something other than an EcoFlow solar generator, you need to get the particular adapter you need to go from MC4 to whatever. So let's go ahead and move these out of the way. We'll unfold this and have a look at it. Now, this opens up into four fairly good sized sections, and each one of those sections have these small metal grommets on the corner, which I think is a nice touch. Because what that lets you do is attach this to different frames, hang it from paracord or clips to help you position it, and get the most use out of your solar panel. EcoFlow made it pretty easy to be able to hang the panel and put it in different positions to capture the most sunlight that you can. Now, one other thing that I noticed, and I wasn't expecting this, is the fact that this actually has a rubberized coating uh, as opposed to a glass coating. I was kind of just expecting some kind of smooth, fragile glass uh, that was very delicate. Instead, you have this really nice protective rubber coating. And from what I've seen, this doesn't seem to interfere with its ability to collect sunlight and generate power. It just seems like a nice layer of protection to keep stuff like falling tree branches, rocks, and other falling objects from breaking it. Which is great because if you're going to use this like I am, which is going to be family camping, there's going to be kids uh, running around, there's going to be people playing, uh, people are going to be throwing stuff around, footballs, baseballs, and it would really suck pretty bad if somebody threw a football or something like that and shattered the solar panel. Now with this kind of coating right here, I don't think it would really hurt it. But with that being said, let's take this outside, set it up, hook it up to the EcoFlow River and see how long it takes to charge it up. So here we are in the backyard getting ready to do our test. And as you can see, I got the panel set up and I got our MC4 connectors attached to a nice 20 foot long extension cable snaking around here and plugged into the EcoFlow River, which is sitting underneath the shade canopy. It's going to be out here for the duration of this test and I didn't see any reason for it to get any hotter than it needed to. So I threw up this little beach canopy to keep some shade over it and try and keep it cool. I'll show you really quick how the case doubles as a stand. You can see how it folds at an angle and it has these clips right here and over there, basically on all four corners. And those clip into the grommet holes on the solar panel and help keep it stabilized. And as long as you keep it on a fairly flat surface and point it in the general direction of the sun, you're going to get pretty good results. Now, for this test, I'll actually be using my own little stand I made out of a camp chair. It's just enough to keep it off the ground, and that way I don't have to worry about my dog coming over here and doing what dogs tend to do on the solar panel, because it does tend to happen, and I'd rather not have to deal with it. Another reason is when I'm camping, I don't want my panel sitting on the ground, especially in the campsite where there's going to be a lot of kids running around and playing. You know, accidents tend to happen, and if you can prevent them, you might as well. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead, get this put in the stand, make sure it's pointing in the right direction, get the camera set up, and we'll see how long it takes for the solar panel to charge up the EcoFlow River. All right, guys, so we got everything set up and recording. First and foremost, let me apologize for what you're seeing on the screen right now. 
Uh, if you're seeing this blue flickering light from the LCD on the River 600, I apologize. This is a result of the time lapse video. So if you are sensitive to flashing lights, you might want to look away from this. Just turn audio up on your phone or whatever you're watching this on, and I'll kind of call it out to you. So right now we're at 11%, saying we have about five hours to charge, and we have 50 watts coming in. And it looks like we're around 30, I want to say 35 minutes into it. So we'll, uh, we'll check back on that in a second. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, which I think is really cool, is if you do happen to get one of these panels, it is worth it to invest in one of these long cables. The one I'm using there is by Renogy. It cost me about $25, but what it really lets me do is be able to keep uh, the solar generator or the battery where, wherever I want to, for the most part. This will let me keep it inside of my tent, just run the cord through the e-port on it, and you know, for the most part, be able to put the solar panel wherever I need to around the campsite to get the most uh, the most power out of it. So definitely, if you're, if you're going to get one of these panels, it's probably worth it to spring the extra, you know, 20, 30 bucks, and pick you up one of these cords somewhere. So let's go ahead and do an update real quick. We're at, uh, it looks like 32%, and saying we have about three hours left to charge, and we have 65 watts coming in, and we're one hour and 38 minutes in so uh, definitely the sun is getting up there and it's giving a lot more power to the panel and that's bringing our charge time down now uh, i guess under the best of circumstances if you're able to pull the full 110 watts uh, you should be able to charge the river 600 in around two hours i believe and believe it or not i ran this test earlier but i forgot to adjust uh, my maximum charge level and it was set at 80%. So I left it out here and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't going to 100. And then, you know, light bulb went off and uh, kind of reminded me that I had set the max charge at 80% for when it's around the house. So I had to go in and uh, change all those settings, deplete the battery again, and set everything up. So you're actually looking at the second run here. So let me go ahead and give you an update. We are now. Uh, two hours, 30 minutes in at 61%, uh, saying we have two hours left to charge and right at 75 watts on our input. So, you know, as the sun gets up there in the sky, we're definitely getting a lot more power. Now, I really don't expect to ever get a full 110 watts out of one of these. If I do, that'll be fantastic. But for me, uh, I, I go camping to relax. I'm not going to sit out there and move a panel around the campsite all day long to try and get the most power out of you know every minute that I'm there. I just want something that I can set out there for the course of the day and it keep my stuff charged up. And it looks like this is probably going to do the trick. So I'll go ahead and give you another update here. It says we have one hour left and we are at 81%. We're pulling 80 watts and uh, three hours, 24 minutes in. So we're getting really close to finishing here. It uh, looks like we're peaking out at about 82, 83 watts at 97% at 3 hours, 37 minutes. Now we're down to about, say, 20 minutes left, and we're at 99%. And here we go. We just hit 100% at 3 hours and 47 minutes. I don't think peak watts were past 84% the whole time. So, you know. Pretty good sunlight. Uh, it was definitely good conditions. Wasn't, you know, the best conditions, but still pretty good. And was able to charge this three hours, 45 minutes, or excuse me, three hours, 47 minutes. So not too bad. Now uh, we'll go ahead, wrap this video up. We'll go inside and I'll give you my final thoughts on this solar panel. So now that we've done our field test on this, I gotta say I am pretty impressed with this solar panel. It checks most, if not all, the boxes that I need for when I go camping. Uh, first of all, it's very portable, folds up into itself. The case itself can be a stand if you're in a pinch. Another thing I like about it, rubberized coating that is on the panel itself. It just adds an extra layer of protection that I myself wasn't even expecting when I got it. So very pleasantly surprised there. Uh, the other thing is the cable setup. The MC4 connectors are, you know, readily available just about anywhere you go. You can pick them up at RV centers. You can pick them up online. They're easy to replace, so you don't have to worry about getting worn out cables that if, you know, something happens to it, you're just out of solar panel. You know, you just 
replace the MC4 connector and you're good to go. Uh, another thing about this that I really, really like is how much sunlight it actually captured. You know, I put this outside and just really set it and forget it. I pointed it in the general direction of the sun and let it do its thing. And it got up around 84, 85 watts. And that works out great for me because I am not going to move this panel around a lot when I go camping. That's not what I bought it for to try and get every ounce of energy out of it. I just need it to be able to charge up my, my EcoFlow 600 during the day so I can run my fans, you know, at nighttime and for part of the day, if not all the day. And it looks like this is going to help me do that just fine. Now, as far as price goes, $350. Now, that might be a shock to most of you, but there is good news. GoFlow and Amazon are always running promotions with this where you're going to get $100 off, so that drops the price down to $250. Bucks. And that is a steal for what this can do right here. You know, I was very, uh, very hesitant about messing around with anything solar. It's just, I'm old school. And to me, it's always been kind of like this new technology that's always been kind of like not really there yet. Well, it's there now. These guys got it nailed down and it works great. So, you know, $250, it's definitely worth the investment. Now, ultimately, that's up to you. And hopefully, I've provided you with enough information to make that decision for yourself. But with all that being said, I'm Patrick with Uncle Bill's Camping. Thanks for stopping by to check out my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you fine people the next time around.